Hi folks. I'm going to do a quick review and unboxing of this Rododo 40 amp dual input DC to DC and MPPT charge controller for my battery which is a Dr. Prepare 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate with cold temperature charging protection. It looks like a pretty easy install. I've already got my fuse box and this is just a simple 10 amp PWM charge controller which I'm going to wire into the battery as well so I can use my folding panel off to the side if my truck isn't directly in the sun. I've already got a 200 watt high efficiency solar panel on the roof and I've already wired the uh, truck to the battery up front so just a couple connections we're going to make. I'm going to put the Rododo device right over here, screw it into the wall and crimp some connections and see what happens. Now this device says it's rated at 40 amps, uh, which should charge the battery fairly quickly. Um, it appears to be the same device as a number of other manufacturers I've seen, uh, including ATEM I think is one, I think Power Queen makes another one that is exactly the same. And uh, reviews, specifically on this one, were uh, pretty good as far as I had seen. Um, but other ones, which appear to be the same device, might be a little lackluster. I reached out to a couple of folks in uh, some forums regarding this particular charge controller. They got mixed reviews from the similar models, saying that they could only achieve about 20 amps. Um, which is fine for me, actually, because I don't want to put too much strain on my alternator. Um, but I really just wanted it because it will handle the charge controller from the solar panel with MPPT and get some juice from the alternator while driving. So if we open the box up, it's pretty simple. Let's see what we have. We have a product manual, the device itself, a couple of connectors which will attach to the battery, to the solar panels, and to the uh, alternator. And the connections coming out of the device. So I just need to crimp a couple of connections, mount this on the wall, and then we'll be ready to go. Nice thick metal screws. Alright, so now that the device is mounted on the wall, I'm going to start by making some battery cables. And that means we're going to have to crimp some connectors onto this so we can fit them onto the terminals of the battery. Now I do want to use a fuse between the charge controller and the battery so I've got this a &L fuse here I'm going to put a 40 amp uh, fuse inside it and we'll wire this in.
Now the sheathing on this wire is so flexible it doesn't strip with the wire stripper, so I gotta manually cut it. Just enough to break it. We're good. Loosen the set screw. Tighten it up. Okay, we got a 40 amp fuse. That just goes right inside. the other side. There you go. Alright, so the other side, we have these connectors here, which actually fit right inside of these things. I'll double check the color we're going to use, but let's get it crimped on. Got a completed cable with a fuse. Now we'll do the black cable. All right, so we're going to assemble the connector that will go to the battery first. And this one here says output. Now the red one is the DC input, so that's the one that will connect to the alternator. And the blue one is the solar input. Just like that, it snaps in on the positive side. Click. Alright, so now we'll do the same thing with the other cables. Get them prepped and then we'll connect the battery first and then the other two. Okay, time to hook up the battery. Battery's connected. We have three leads because one of these is going to my fuse box, which is right up here. One of them is going to the Redodo charge controller and the other one is going to my Renogy charge controller. 
Next, we're gonna hook the solar connection up. Last one, which is the alternator. There it is. Now we can see it's on solar charging. It is charging and the power is on now, but I need to set the battery type because it's on SLA. So you hold it down for a couple of seconds and it starts blinking and then you press it. And because I have a lithium iron phosphate, we're going to set it to that. And then you hold it again and now it's set. And there is a memory function to that, so if all power is lost when it turns back on, it will remember your setting. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to do is wire the alternator into this cutoff switch. Um, they basically just connect to those things, and then this turns. And I think we're going to put it right there on the wall, so it's next to the uh, other charge controller. Now, we know that... When you put a little extra load onto the alternator, it could affect your gas mileage. So depending on uh, whether or not my alternator is overloaded with this new charge controller, I might decide uh, to turn this off and just let the solar panel handle everything. Um, it'll be a good test, but either way, I think it's good practice just to have a cutoff switch right there. Let's start the truck up and see what we get. Okay, great. So it's switched off of solar and is now charging from the alternator. I'm going to cut the truck off and let's see how long it takes for it to stop and switch back to solar. There it is.